Shainer? Here. Scott? Here. Waters? Here. Moore? Here. Okay. Here. Can you stand for a moment of silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stephanie Pickenpaw. We have a proclamation that reads, whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, income levels, lifestyles, and genders, and in fact is probably affecting someone you know, and whereas one in three women and one in nine men will be a victim of violence in their lifetime. Domestic violence violates an individual's human rights by destroying dignity, security, and self-worth due to the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control or abuse. Safe Place works every day to help end these acts of violence and help rebuild the lives of survivors. Whereas in Siouxland, the Safe Place is available 24 hours a day, providing immediate response to nearly 2,000 adults and children. In danger or in crisis, and despite increasing needs and diminishing funding, no one is in an unsafe situation was, uh, was turned away. Whereas the impact of domestic violence affects all the members of the community and only a coordinated community response will put a stop to this atrocious crime and ensure funding is continuously available to, to provide these life-saving services. Now, therefore, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, and Bath City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2022 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Sioux City, Iowa, and urge all citizens to actively participate in the scheduled events and program, and to think about the fact that it is someone you know. Thank you for presenting this. Um, Safe Place has provided um, safety and advocacy for over 40 years in Sioux City. Um, and I would like to invite everybody to our DV vigil, our um, Thursday evening at 530. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Items 2 through 10 seek constitute a consent agenda to consider them to pass unanimously. Any person wanting to speak on an agenda item, come to the podium as I read that item. Any person wanting to speak on an item not on the agenda, please come up under citizen concerns at the end of the meeting. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Two is a reading of the City Council minutes of September 26, 2022. Three is a resolution increasing the number of inclusive Sioux City Advisory Committee members from 11 to 12 with the addition of a member that would represent the disability community. Four is a resolution adopting the third quarter supplement to the municipal code covering ordinances through 2022-0936. Five is a resolution proposing to lease certain property known as the Riverside Recreational Sports Complex to the Arena Sports Academy. Tell us what we're doing today so everybody understands. Yeah, Matt Salvatore, Parks and Recreation Director. I just want to note uh, in the resolution, uh, the wording is, is not ex exact. It, it talks about... Um, it talks about the Hesse Foundation uh, operating and managing Little League programs. Uh, they never led us to believe that they would be doing that. This is boilerplate language from past council actions on lease agreements. So I just wanted to point out the, the difference here. Uh, they want to use it for, for programming and for tournaments, but not specifically for Little League. Is the, is the Arena Sports Academy and the Hesse Foundation the one and the same? Because I don't like it is. So who's the lease to? the Arena Sports Academy or to the Hesse Foundation? So the Hesse Foundation uh, is... Can you say your name? Yep, sorry, Dustin okay. Cooper, Executive Director of the Arena. Uh, the Hesse Foundation is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization, um, obviously affiliated with the Arena. What the Hesse Foundation does is fundraises throughout the course of the year uh, to bring in certain events to the community while also scholarshiping 
uh, kids in the community for uh, different programming. So the Hesse Foundation, Foundation is actually the one that owns the lease with the Long Lines Recreation Center right now and is looking to do so um, with the SYA fields as well. Because it's not reading that way in the in the RCA. I understand, and that's where I think some of the confusion is coming uh, coming from. Um, whereas I, I know that myself and other people are affiliated with both organizations, and sometimes the two get lumped in together. They are in fact separate. No, uh, the reason I'm asking is we historically don't rent fields to profit organizations. We do it to nonprofits. So the resolution proposing, it says resolution proposing to lease portion of real property at Riverside Sports Complex, 100 Riverside Boulevard to the Hesse Foundation DBA Arena Sports Academy. Which is not correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm asking the question. I don't put the RCAs out, I'm just. Correct, so we, so we have to, another hearing on the 17th. So we need to 17. pick out the DBA. We, we have another hearing on 17, so when this comes back we can correct that, Clarify. is that right, Nicole? I, it may be clean, cleaner to delete it and bring it back on the 10th. With okay. The, um, hearing date to make sure that it's accurate. Okay. And then we can correct the heading to remove the loop um, portion and add programming and tournaments to make sure that that is accurate. But I don't care if the rest of the council wants to do it that way. I just don't think it's fair to give money to a profit organization, for-profit organization, when it comes to parks and rec funding, like we do these complexes. That's where I've got a, a problem. If you guys are okay with them leasing it that way, that's fine, you can vote for it, and I don't have a problem with that, and you, if you're okay giving them money, but we don't have enough money for the Little League programs that are nonprofits, and then to bring in an, a for-profit one, just, that doesn't make sense to me, but I'm okay with whatever you wanna do. And for clarification, Mr. Cooper had said this, the other agreement with Long Lines is with the Hesse Foundation, and I believe they're also the carriers of the insurance, which is required for the lease. Correct. So, yeah, and their intention is to have it under the Hesse Foundation. Yes, so we can just clean up the language, yes, make sure, because then it's going through a nonprofit, the language yep. is clean, it doesn't have the little league side of it. And I think it's important to note also that 100% of the profits that we have generated thus far from the Long Lines Auditorium have either been invested back into the facility itself or utilized to scholarship uh, children in the community for various programming. So whereas I understand the concern when a for-profit gets involved, that is not the case here. Um, and, and we will do the same with, with uh, the SYA fields. Good. There's yeah, been a we, profit down there already? Making a little bit of money. And we have some We're time. also spending a lot of money on that facility, so. I know. We have some time to get it right because it doesn't start till November 1. Correct. 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 Yep. Correct. We'll bring it back. Thank you. Well, Thanks. I don't know. Somebody will make a motion. Anybody else want to be heard? Why, you, if you want to be heard, you can come and be heard. Mike Melanowski. Uh, 1709 South St. Albans. I'm the district administrator for Little League Baseball. I've been here before. I just want to make sure that the Little League name is not used incorrectly. Mm -hmm. It's a trademark, and it's very important for Little League and our nonprofit organizations because we've been nonprofit and utilizing Little League Baseball now for centuries here, and I think we've done a pretty good job. We're all mostly all volunteers, and I just hope you take that under consideration too. And it and to answer that question, I think that, yeah, we would all want to make sure of that as well. And it's my understanding that you've spoke with Mr. Cooper about that, right? And he doesn't plan to. A little bit, to... yes, yes. We, okay. we have. You know, I don't have any problems with it, but it's, it, when we're a nonprofit and they're a profit, man, it, that's tough. That's really well, tough. And to that's why it will be, yeah, through the Hesse Foundation, okay. a nonprofit. Okay. It sounds like we'll get that cleaned up and addressed. Okay. But I appreciate it. Mike. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. So, uh, go ahead. So, Nicole, can you look and go through the lease agreement and make sure that phrase isn't in there? Yes, and I think it's mainly contained in the headings and the RCA. That's the way I read it, too, but will you kind of just well, do a yes, word we will double search, check it. please? Okay. Yep, and make sure it's correct. And the Hesse Foundation now has to furnish a financial statement to the city for, so you, this would take care of both sides of the. Uh, I move, we delete. Second. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? 
Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Shainer. Aye. Item 6A to see a resolution granting permits to Fibercom to own, operate, and maintain underground cable. Seven are actions authorizing payment. <coughs> a is a resolution approving payment to RP constructors for the Rev Aviation Emergency Waterline Repair. B is a resolution approving change order two and three and authorizing payment to Subservco for the annual sidewalk ramp project. I need to abstain. C is a re conflict of interest. C is a resolution authorizing payment to Hydro Clean for the Southern Hills Drive Storm Sewer Lining Project. D is a resolution approving partial payment, settlement, and a claim and authorizing payment. A or purchasing. A is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Centrifuge and Pump Services for repair. B is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Landrell Medical Corporation for EMS mannequins and accessories. C is a resolution awarding purchase order to in inspect medical solutions for EMS mannequin training items. D is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Cryotech de-icing technology for de-icing fluid. Nine are applications for beer and liquor license, ten are boards and commissions and committee minutes. Anyone to be heard on any of those? Mayor, I need to, on 9A1C, I need to abstain on the SOHO renewal. SOHO? Yes. 9A1C. Passes 5-0 other than the items of conflict of interest. Appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. Levin's a motion appointing La Andrew Loswell to the Effective Fiscal Policy, Fiscal and Public Policy Committee to complete the balance of the three-year term expiring December 31st, 2000. Passes 5-0. 12 is a motion, motion appointing Lashana Moyle to the Inclusive Sioux City Advisory Committee to complete the balance of a three-year term expiring December 31st, 2022, and reappointing Lashana Moyle to the committee for a three-year term. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5013. It's a motion appointing Andrew Gleiser to the Planning and Zoning Commission Board of Adjustment. I'll move that. Second. 5014 is a motion appointing Justin Johnston the Transit System Advisory Board. I'll move that. The good news is three really, I mean, I, Andrew's been here, but the other three are pretty much new and they interviewed very well, which may be a, that passes 5-0, hopefully a sign that people are coming out of COVID and be, will be willing to serve. Again. They're re-engaging with public interest. Sure. Recommendations of planning and zoning hearing, 15 is a hearing and ordinance rezoning 1819 Nebraska Street and repealing ordinance. Number 2022-0896, the petitioner, Sioux Land Youth for Christ, PNZ recommends approval. I'll move that. Second. Hearing is open. Anyone from PNZ here? No? Guess <coughs> Any questions? For the plate. This is the lot. Legal, yeah. isn't it? Correcting the legal description? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I know. I just want to make sure nobody has a question. Hearing's closed. Yeah, it is. It does look like a great project. Especially, I hadn't been up there in just a little bit, but close to that school as well and everything. It's Passes 5-0. Anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? No. I'll move that. Second. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Second and third. Second. Move. Pass five zero. So, um, 16 is a hearing and resolution approving plans and specs 
for the Tyson Event Center audio system renovation project. I'll move that. Second. Public hearing is now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5-0. 17 is an ordinance amending Chapter 1020, Parking and Parking Meters, <coughs> Chapters 10.24, Parking Violations Enforcement, and Chapter 10.94, Municipal Parking Ramps and Lots of the Municipal Code to increase the ramp parking and parking meters and to increase the overtime parking fees. First consideration was passed on September 19, 2022. Second consideration was approved September 26, 2022, and I'll move the third reading. Second. Questions? Uh, this is what we asked for uh, from our public works team uh, to get something on the books for a scheduled increase so we don't run into this problem again in five or ten or ever how many years it takes. Uh, so if you ladies would like to talk about how we arrived at that. Yes, absolutely. I'm Tiffany Claiborne, and I'm the Parking Division Supervisor. And so Sarah had compiled, she, Sarah, actually, if you want to. Sure. She's the Sarah financial Swear. person, so I better let her do it. I'll the, do the part. There you go. <laughs> sure. Sarah Swearingen, Budget Manager. Um, Tiffany, Dave, and I sat down and kind of tried to come up with a plan that would best suit. We don't want to push people out of the ramps if we make the meters cheaper. So we thought that the first step would be to increase the meters after we do our initial update here. Um, we kind of looked at a 3% annual with the way the meters are set up. We can't actually imp implement 3% each year. We would have to wait until we get to a number that would evenly divide for the minutes. So 3% annually, we would be able to implement in FY27, and that would move it from 80 cents to 90 cents. Um, so that once we get that completed in 27, then we feel comfortable moving the ramps in FY28. So that way we keep that balance and we don't push people out. So currently that's our long-term plan. Um, that does put us at a year-end balance of 741,000 in FY28. So that gives us enough cushion to deal with anything that we find in the structural right. assessment. If we don't have anything major along the way, because you know, there's always something happening. There's yep. always lighting needs, security needs. There's all kinds of things like that that happen. And this way the fund has a balance being built every year. Yeah. And, and we're not surprised. <clears throat> we kind of thought that as we got closer to the FY26 that we would, you know, continue to reevaluate each year as fine does anyways, and then come to you if we think there's any changes that need to be had. So we will be looking at it every year as opposed, we're not going to wait five years and then look at it. We are going to look at it every September. Right. So the increases are very gradual once yes. you have them scheduled. Right. Anyone to be heard? Do you feel uh, comfortable with the, with the uh, program we have for making improvements and repairs to our parking ramps? Yes, I do. Yes. I think right now is what we're doing. We're doing one project like this year. We we did the security cameras and then we're doing the elevators. So I think the, the future in discovery this year, we're doing the lighting. We're looking at a lighting project again next year. So um, I, I do feel comfortable with what's been said. About the surface area of the parking ramps, has that needed an overlay or? We are gonna have them continually look at it because I have a meeting in fact this week with, with them just to see where they feel that the needs are going to be next year. Yes. So it's ongoing. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And, and then just one other question on the reserve parking. Yes. Ed, apparently, and, and I don't know how often reserve parking is used in the ramps, but um, I, I think this applies to the parking ramps, doesn't it? Yes. Reserve parking. Yes. And it looked like um, before an applicant could make a request for any kind of time period, but now we've changed that to a minimum of eight days. So that's actually for the bag meters. So that that's is just the bag. on street. Yes. Oh. Yes. That's for so the reserved parking is reserved in the ramp, but then they can do the eight days for the reserved bag meters. But it has to be at least eight for eight. Yes, for the bag meters. 
Is that, is, what's the reason for that? Because it could be bagged two days and then? Well, is what they could do with the two days. They could just get the no parking sign instead of the eight days because just the time that it takes for staff to go put the bag meters up and for just all of the processing and the billing for it. Construction. For construction. All for, okay. Yes. For any of the bills? Mostly contractors buy those. Right, so then. typically it's much longer than eight days. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you get the just the no parking one for like a day or two, it's like for a festival or something. Yes. That somebody, you want to block off the meter so someone's not parking yes. the next morning. Yes, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thanks, ladies. Thank, thank you, you so much for all your hard work. That's thank you project. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hurry up and get to your football game. I will get to my football game. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Abstaining for personal conflict. Passes 4 0 to 1, Mr. O'Kane abstains. 18, an ordinance amending chapter 7.01, definitions and penalties of the municipal code to modify the definition of domestic animal, deferred from September 19, 2022. I'll move first reading. Second. First, after Steve and Christine. Lowell will speak. She's put her name in, so go ahead. No, go ahead. You're first. Okay. So uh, just to sort of remind council where we're at on this, uh, this amendment uh, solely changes the definition of domestic animal to include effectively all animals, uh, with the sole exception of uh, hamsters, guinea pigs, and fish. There was a uh, discussion of uh, concurrently also raising the total animal limit that one can have uh, in, a, in addition to this change. Uh, th the council can certainly suggest that. That would require amending a separate section of the code along with that. And if the council has direction on where they'd like to raise the limit to, again, currently it's three total two species, I'd be happy to do that. I did, in addition this week, reach out to, Hope I'm saying his name right, uh, Jerry Dominacek. I think he's Czech like me when I read his name. I'm not totally sure though. Uh, and, and he just gave some uh, information from uh, other humane societies in the area, uh, other cities even I hadn't looked at. Uh, Council Bluffs is uh, a four species limit. Mason City effectively has no limit. Uh, Cedar Rapids, I, I told you before, the city does not have a limit. Actually the county, Milan County has a limit of six animals, uh, no species limit. Sioux Falls has a, a total limit of four, uh, and he thought that uh, Vermilion was six total and then four species, Yankton was four total uh, of any species under six months old. Uh, Cedar Falls, he said, allows three cats and three dogs. Waterloo used to allow four total of any mix. They recently changed that to four dogs and four cats. Total? So yeah. eight? That, that's what he says. I, I just saw this this morning. I haven't had time to. Des Moines with six? Uh, Des Moines was in my. I think that was six. Original email on that. Uh, six animals and a three dog limit is Des Moines. And then Davenport was the other one with a restriction that had a four animal, three species limit. Hmm. This is just the first reading, is that correct? Yes. Reading if we change the number, that's separate though, right? Correct. And if there's direction to change the number, I, there are a couple things. We could bring back a completely right. new ordinance with that. those so everyone would have the ability to see the additional change because yeah, so. it's not included in this version. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Nothing I enjoy, enjoy more than talk about animal ordinances. That <laughs> is just something that as a way of brightening your whole week. Christine, come to the microphone. I have your name and address and tell us what you want to talk about. Right up here, Christine. Right, right here. Right here, Christine. There you go. I've come to plead my case with you guys. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I feel it's important. I have come to ask the city council why the ordinance is two dogs and one cat or two cats and one dog. If the three animals you own are all cats or all dogs, why should it make a difference if they are all spayed and neutered? 
Not all people are dog lovers or cat lovers. I'm a cat lover. And when we lived at our address before we moved, we had two cats. This is before you came up with this ordinance. That makes to me no sense. One day after a rainstorm, my husband found in our yard a tiny abandoned kitten, cold, wet, and covered in mud. We took it in, then we had three. We had Sammy neutered at six months to join our two spayed females. Our neighbors never knew we had three because they never went out. Our problem in this city concerns spayed and neutered animals that are not spayed and neutered. I volunteer at the Humane Society, and each week I'm told by Kelly, the head lady, that people are leaving baby kittens or puppies at their door, in boxes or even in totes with lids. Other people do worse, taking them out in the country and dumping them. The one we adopted from the Humane Society for my sister-in-law was a stray. Now she's spayed. The Humane Society had picked it up. Our new kitten was dumped in the country astray, but a cat rescuer found her and gave her to us when we found out we lost ours at 15. She is spayed. I'm asking you guys to allow three cats or dogs per household on the stipulation that they are all spayed and neutered and certified by a vet that they are, and have cat owners in the city keep their animals inside and not let them run loose. They are made prone to get hurt or get killed when running loose or get pregnant if a female. If we were allowed to have three cats or dogs, more animals would be adopted out. Not all cats or dogs get along with each other if there are mixtures in the house. I agree with three yes, but please let us cat or dog people have our three if we want, if vet certified, if they are spayed and neutered. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So we started a petition. Uh, you got to your name. Oh, sorry. Parker. Yeah, I forgot. You're good. Uh, Parker Moose, 4624 Harrison Street. Um, so we started a petition here this week. We haven't had a chance to get very many signatures yet, uh, but I'd like to point out the very first one, which is actually our neighbor who had um, called animal control and the police on us originally. Um, we've spoken. There's no issue between us. Um, he said that he doesn't have a problem with us having what we have at our house. Um, the problem was when we had that escape and it, there hasn't been an ongoing issue. There's no... Parker, I'm really sorry. Can you move the mic up? Okay. Sometimes online you can't hear it. I just want to make okay. sure. Okay. Um, so I said um, that we spoke, uh, my neighbor and I, and there's no ongoing issue. There's no continued nuisance. Um, he says that he doesn't have a problem with what we have in our house. He doesn't care how many we have. Um, and he was the first signature on the petition. So if you guys are um, going to be voting on it, I'd, I'd like us to be able to have a chance to uh, get more signatures on the petition to be able to bring that forward. Uh, I don't know what kind of options there are for an appeal after the fact otherwise, but uh, that's all we have to say. So. Thank you. I, just out of curiosity, what's the language of the petition? Like, what are you uh, saying? So it says, uh, we oppose the city's attempt to add additional restrictions to the number of animals a person may lawfully keep in their home by redefining what constitutes as a domestic animal. In addition to this, we request that the city additionally remove uh, their per household pet limitation based on a precedent established in the case of Commonwealth versus Creighton, uh, Pennsylvania Commonwealth 639 A2D 1296 of 94, uh, which established a precedent showing pet limitations uh, violate an individual's constitutional right. And that was that court case that I brought two weeks ago um, and gave each of you. So. Thank you. Thank you. How many signatures have you gathered? Um, so far, we just have seven. seven. Uh, there, we gave one to Petco, and it sounds like they've had um, quite a few of their staff sign it as well. Uh, we've, I've been working until 10 or 11 these last couple weeks, finishing up a house, so I haven't had time to go knock on any doors. But well, and just so you know, this is the first reading, so then if we choose, we can extend it out in additional weeks to allow for public comment. Okay. That would give you your time if that's what you request. Yeah, that's what we'd like. Thank you. Next, anyone? If 
you have some ideas, so we're waiting for your work. Oh, my ideas? I thought we share. agreed to make that separate. Well, I think you've got to give staff direction as oh, to Oh, right. I, it's going to be separate. Uh, my direction was thinking of increasing our number of domestic animals per household, um, bringing it up to six, and no more than three of each species. So kind of giving people a little bit more leeway. Um, I don't know if we can force people to have their pets spayed or neutered. I'm not sure about that part. I kind of, even what do you, do you know anything about that? Um, I'm not sure any other city does that right. uh, of the ones that we identified. Um, well, I guess I was just thinking you, that our Humane Society, Noah's Hope, our animal control do so much, you know, to advocate for the adoption of pets, whether it be, you know, rabbits, dogs, cats, whatever they are. And I think the ordinance has been the same for a while. So if we're able to adopt a couple of more, you know, per household or one uh, extra pet, I think that that would be a service to them to loosen up that limit with the number that we're allowed to have in our homes. Why don't you, why don't, I, I feel like four, but if you're gonna allow six, then they, then to go above four for me, they've gotta be neutered. So, I mean, you gotta have a neutered ordinance here. Okay. I and if like somebody wants to propose five or something differently, that's that's fine. No, I I can live with the six as long as they are neutered. I don't have a problem with we that. We just have to remember it's not necessarily six dogs or six cats. It's it could be three birds or whatever that falls into that. You still got the per species limit in there, obviously. Then. Mm hmm. Yep. Not changing that language at all. Well, I agree that it just becomes. I don't know, pretty difficult to enforce. I'd have to have Stephen look into the legality of, of forcing individuals to be able to neuter their animals. I mean, I understand, I understand the premise behind it, obviously, you know what I mean? I, I don't want strays getting out or sometimes even your pet gets out and you know, can then become pregnant or impregnate a different animal. And then we have more, more trouble and more situations. I, I think we'd have to look into that. The other, I would want them to, whether they come and speak or have written, um, I, I appreciate you speaking. I know you said you spoke to Chris Wall with Animal Control as well as the Humane Society, it sounds like. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page with them and have any of their concerns, um, that those are at least brought forward. My, my stance is I always try to defer to Animal Control and these individuals because they're the ones doing the enforcement arm of that and having to manage these populations. So I just want to make sure that that part of it is explicitly in there as well. Whether they agree or not, we might not agree altogether, but at least then we would know. Uh, I'll do my best to reach out to Chris, uh, Cindy, or both this yeah. week. Uh, I did discuss this with Caleb, obviously, who's the one who prosecutes municipal infractions. And yeah. his opinion was, you know, there's, you know, some, some people suggest this can be prosecuted through, you know, just general nuisance enforcement. Uh, Caleb's preference was to have something more like this than, than just the general nuisance statute because that yeah a little hard to make that stick when you're trying to enforce something like this um and did what was the city that had no limit what did you say was that uh iowa city as far as i can tell although now that i learned about cedar rapids i'm curious if Might be a uh johnson county <laughs> has some regulations i'm not totally i can't believe they don't yeah right? it's when it's an urban area like that but um, we, we already somewhat do control because we give a cheaper fee if you're neutered than if you're not neutered mm -hmm. so there there can't be a huge problem with require i mean i and again i don't care if they neuter their animal but they should have a limitation then yeah of how and i'm not saying they, I just, their, their limitation no. shouldn't be the same number as somebody that has all neutered pets. oh sure so four if you have them um, not neutered and six if you have them could live with that I i'll, I'll look into that as well okay this week which which one of our domestic animals are licensed and do just dogs and cats Dogs and cats. Do we have a number of how many are licensed? Oh yeah, they know that. Well, I'm asking if he knows it. Not right I mean, I'd like to know the number. Head. Could you could you get that number for us? Sure, I sure can. And those are licensed every year. Yes. It what? gets lower every year. What? It was. It, it dropped. Peaked during pit bull season. As number of licenses sold in the city, and it's that issue. consistently dropped since that. When are they, they know we don't enforce it? When are they purchased? 
They are calendar year, January 1st to December 31st. Get a bill at the end of November and you gotta pay it by January 1st. Or the well, rates increase. Of the on March, after March 1st, the penalties start applying. But it's supposed to be paid in January yeah. 1st. And the other, I, I like the comparison with the other communities. What the part of the equation that's left out of that is what kind of problems and issues have they run into with animals and, and sure. domestic animals. And I don't know how you'd get that without doing a lot more research, but it, it kind of leaves out the other half of the story. You know, I was how actually we got here in the first place. Yeah. I was actually surprised to learn, uh, in, in addition to Council Bluffs, uh, uh, the gentleman from the Humane Society sent up this flyer from Pottawatomie County, and actually a lot of the small towns there have pretty restrictive animal limitations to at least on dogs. Just I'm just going down the list here, like four dogs, three dogs, two dogs, four dogs, looking at towns like Crescent and Hancock, Iowa, and stuff like that, you know. And actually three, three cities in Pottawatomie County prohibit pit bulls, although I know we don't want to open up that can of worms again. But uh, it's, I, I, I guess I was surprised to learn that, that even the small towns are finding it appropriate or desirable to you know, limit animals have a way. And in my mind, the bigger the city, the you know, the more it makes sense because the more people you have living in a confined space. Right, because of density, right? I think I have my orders for this week, so. You'll be able to have that information next week? Absolutely. Just for clarification on the council direction, if we're looking at an amendment to the number of animals, that affects more than just one section of the code. Um, I'm anticipating that there are other sections that will be impacted as well, so we'll need to have time um, to research the issue number one and then pull out the other sections that we'll need. I was gonna, that's what I was gonna suggest is I'm not in a rush. Or, right, no, or, I'm not in a rush either. That's why I was, that's why I expressed to you, I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page before we're doing this. I wanna make sure that we're as informed as can be and if you need more time to do so, like I would much rather give you more time. Two weeks would be nice. I yeah, thought that's for two weeks. That's fine. Well, I thought you said we could still do the first reading on this particular amendment. This is only pertaining to the definition of demand. Right, it's no. separate. Why wouldn't we want? I thought we could proceed on that. I'm just talking about the number of animals. Right. That we're not going to include that in this. We're not right. No, but we could proceed with what's in front of us now. Yeah, you could do first reading and then amendment. Amend it. Would, he wants to do it would you rather we delete and start over? If, it would be best if we pass this. This first. is a separate issue that we're right. talking about. And we're not actually talking about the agenda item any longer. There are two separate issues. One is the definition of domestic animal, which you could proceed on. The other is a, the number of animals allowed, which is a totally separate issue. And yeah. would have two different ordinance settings okay. on the agenda instead of incorporating them together. All right. Okay. The first read we've done first, we'll just vote. We worry about birds. I have the number of I'm licenses if you'd like well. to hear it. I'm oh, worried about it. Yes. Uh, currently, for 2022, there are 540 cats licensed and 26, two, excuse me, 2,664 dogs. That's really low. I was going to say, which is about probably a quarter of how many we have in the community, but. Oh, probably less than that. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I watched. Nobody some... buys the. We don't enforce it. Well, how do you the only way you enforce, you enforce it enforce is it? if your dog gets out and gets picked up by animal control, and then they get to pay the fine and they get to right. buy the license. How else would you enforce it? And we never. Well, you could go back walking. five years ago when everybody That's was correct. buying a license, and you could. Well, to be clear, this statute that's before you right now does not require any new licensure. I understand. No. We're just talking I, about I get limiting. that. I'm right. just saying that we never go back and say, you know, there must have been 30,000 Fido's die last year because our the licenses went down mm -hmm. 28,000 or some crazy number. I mean, I'm just saying we don't do anything to enforce it. I don't well, even know why we Is the ordinance a moot point that. then? Uh -huh. Is the number of pets per home a moot point? Well, it's a moot point because we don't know what's out there. That's for sure. It's all on the, until a neighbor complains, like Bob and I have been dealing with on one. Until that neighbor complains, you don't know about it. Especially, if Christine's right. If somebody could have six cats and nobody would ever know it because they keep them in the house. What generates the notice of the reminder to renew? The <coughs> if they're previously, what, gen if, what generates the notice? You get a bill. That I'm not sure on. Because if you're previously no, no. registered, right? Yeah. A, if, but that doesn't. But if so, if I buy a pet this 
year, I won't get a no. I won't get a notice. You yeah, you get will. Self report. If you license a dog this year. No, if I don't license. Oh, if you don't. Yeah, if no. You, don't. Don't. you have to self report. It's all self compliant. Because yeah. oh, I you recently a got a dog. Yeah. So and I got things, a license. <laughs> like the excess <laughs> animals that's permit. That's what they told puts an yeah. unfair burden on the people that are trying to comply. Yeah, right. Well, and it's there's so many out there for me, that it's a safety thing as well. Like I got Betty chipped and got licensed. Right. It's important to me if she would get loose, which she's a puppy, that it's could happen. Exactly. Well, well, the big thing with dog and cat licenses is we make you certify rabies vaccinations. Yeah. Right. Like that. that's why that's. And what, you need to certify if they've been neutered. You have to certify that the first time. Or or not, yeah. Yeah. But like but, but yeah, so that like that's that's like one of the main reasons for the license in that case, you know, and we're not looking at expanding license requirements with this, just or, so are there any coordination efforts with the veterinarians in town? They're gonna do that. Well I'm asking the question because I thought there was something before that, Mayor, up in years past that there was it some used to be. Is that what I'm thinking? There used to be a coordination or a they used to sell a the cooperation, license. maybe. Right, there was cooperation. They won't do it anymore. And to where Before it was. Or the pit bull. And to where yeah. it was much more affordable. When what? Because the then they would get a number of vets together or something to coordinate that effort, lower the cost I'm substantially. Just, I'm still just back on the basics. I'm just talking about licensing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. I don't want to get into that other Yeah, side. yeah. I'm not sure it's any of our business, but. I'm, I'm still thinking about that, but just licensing. There's no cooperation, no coordination at all. There might be one left in the city that does it. I can't, I'm not sure which one it is. Is that because it's unpopular to do? Yes. Because they, you're ratting, it, it, yeah. And honestly, when it died off, when they all quit, was during the pit bull. When the city banned the pit bulls, then the vets didn't like it, and so they quit. When the city banned. Yes, yes. But when we when we <laughs> repealed that ordinance and shifted the responsibility to the pet owner, what happened? They quit licensing them altogether. I mean, it's dropped each year. It's dropped a little bit. And they do that online? No, there isn't an online application. But yeah, it's more complicated than that but we we've looked into it um they mail it in we mail it back to them they don't have to come People like to mail things nowadays well i just want to reiterate this is totally unrelated right. what's in front of us right. here <laughs> we're not we're not talking about licensing snakes no, but you gotta understand else. what you're doing it right all yeah works together yeah i was gonna say uh, you it almost does. want something a little more comprehensive or at least think through all the different mm -hmm. parts of it Thanks, Stephen. That's all I have for you, myself. Thank you. you well, we'll only do first reading of this. As we told Mr. Moose, we would. Stephen, do you have to take off right after our meeting? No. Could I see, meet with you afterwards? Because thank you. Oh, we're voting. So the motion is just what was presented to us with the definition of domestic animals. All right, thanks. What did you name your puppy? Betty. Passes three to two, Waters and O'Kane vote no. 19 is a motion authorizing staff to proceed with the permanent removal of the east west stop sign of 28th Street and Waterfront Drive. Somebody else can make a motion for this. I'm not supportive of it. I'll make the motion. Don't understand how you guys can't wait until we open the jail and see Second. what happens. I, I just don't. What's the rush here? That thing's been there for a hundred years, and it. And I don't want to hear any more that stop signs don't. Don't don't control traffic, because if you really believe that, you ought to drive around because stop signs do slow traffic. You're going to make a freeway out there because of this. Board and Fair, City Engineer. Uh, before you is the uh, request to remove the stop sign on there um, at this location at the Force View Mobile Home Park. We've done studies out there. We've done the counts. It is less than 25% 
of the volumes needed for a, an actual stop sign at that location. Uh, and it'll still be, continue to be that low um, at their existing numbers. When the uh, jail opens up, the law enforcement center, and Mid-American opens up, we expect the traffic on that street to uh, just about triple on 28th, not at the mobile home park. We expect that to stay approximately the same. Yeah. And so the reason for a stop sign would be if the intersection was experiencing a great deal of traffic, not just because the one street has an increase in traffic. That is correct. Yes. Again, how did we We're get fine. the stop sign there, number one? Number two, how can you do a traffic study until you open the street and open the businesses and see how many garbage trucks start going that way again with a paved street because they're going to, they're not going to go all the way up around. And so the poor person that's stuck, lots of people come out of one driveway in that trailer court. The people that are stuck there can just wait until the traffic dies down. That's your answer. And I don't think that's the right answer. I think they have a right to get out in the morning and go to work. That is a good question. On that is the, it's the, the through traffic is not the prevailing uh, determining factor for that stop sign. It's the side street traffic, the one that goes into the mobile home park. Right. So it, that traffic can continue to go up. It's still not gonna warrant a stop sign right. at that location. My point is you're missing it. How do those people get out in the morning? How do the people like at my street that when everybody's going to North High, you guys don't care if you got a 45 mile an hour speed limit up there. How do we back out safely? You'll tell me, well, 85% of the people go that fast, so that's the speed limit. Some of the, the stuff that you guys come up with for safety, for people that have to get in and out of things, that, I understand you learned that in school, but when you put it in practice in everyday life for people. Actually, in, in practice, studies have shown that it is safer to do it without it. Because you have to have a way to justify for stop signs to be installed. I mean, well, go to Cecilia down in Cecilia Park, go down the hill. Lauren Callender wanted a stop sign on that hill. It serves absolutely no purpose. Why is that stop sign still here? Where do you guys, I mean, how do you come up with, you're taking this one out? Who asked you to look at that, the county? Uh, no, we looked at that on, on our own <laughs> due to the fact that the street was already closed during this time period. And before it opened up, we wanted to look in, at all that traffic control measures. Go to Cecilia Park. Well, no, and I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I think, I don't know about Gordon, but Dave and I have had conversations that he thinks the amount of stop signs this community is just incredible that there are a lot of stop signs that are unwarranted or would not meet the warrants. But there are neighbors who believe they serve a purpose for them to be able to travel as you and I should expect to be able to. What if there's 30 people wanting to go to work and we've got all the Mid-America trucks, all of the jail guys coming to work, then they just wait because we, gonna, we just think it's so important to get rid of a stop sign. I don't get well, it. I'm, has the Public Works Committee, has your committee looked at that, looked at this? Yeah, we had extensive conversations, but we, we believe in the studies, I guess would be my answer. We believe in the research that shows you need to have warrants for a stop sign. And when you have something that doesn't meet a stop sign, it's actually, in my understanding, is it actually increases safety by pulling the stop sign because a lot of people don't know that that's there or believe that should be there and find themselves running it. So then you actually put the people that are trying to get out of the trailer park in more danger. Prior, that was the conversations we had. Yes. Back in 2007, when we looked at this, the engineering section, they found that about two thirds of the vehicles were not complying with the stop sign at all. They're, they're rolling running, through. They're, well, rolling through would be bowl. nice. Or just blowing it off. Some of them are just blowing right through it. This is similar, very similar numbers to what we experienced on Country Club when we removed that stop sign the one that was put in for the country club reconstruction. We were asked to put a stop sign in. We put it in for a year. We did a study on that. About two thirds were not um, complying with that stop sign at all. They were just running it. Which is making the people coming out of the mobile home trailer park Le less have a safe. false sense of security. And traffic will speed up 
when they have stop signs there, they have a tendency to speed up afterwards because they feel that they're being left, they're, right, they've lost time for stopping. These are not my opinion, these are studies that we've had that, that have been nationwide, not just here in Sioux City. Gordon, would it, would it make sense though to wait till the, these facilities are open and we get a better picture of the traffic count? I don't think it would because we've done, already done a traffic study for those two developments. We paid for those with Fort Mid-American and the Law Enforcement Center and it's not gonna make any difference in my opinion. Get any comments back from the mobile home community? None. I call, we called them, we sent them a letter telling them about it. The only comment I got from them was actually on the phone and they didn't, they thought they would, it would be better if they waited till when the street was open. But again, that's not the number that determines a stop sign, it's the side. Well, just don't pave that section of the street that should have been paved six months ago and we won't have to worry about a lot of traffic going that way. That'll solve the problem. When is that gonna get paved? Because winter is coming. I've asked them that same question. They're, they're working on that solution. They just got a change order from the contractor today. And they're working through that. Just for your information, there's a 70 foot section of roadway that is not paved right in front of the law enforcement center. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it wasn't paved because they didn't want to take the time to shut down that intersect or intersection driveway to the law enforcement center because it would slow down the trucks going in. The trucks Even that are their delivering engineer, the, the county engineer panel. said they could have paved half of it. After we talked to him about they, that, he agreed with us. We met him out on the field, Mark Nara, and we met with him and he agreed that it couldn't be. Wow. So are you, are you saying there are more factors to take into consideration other than the fact that we're not able to enforce the stop signs? Because people run the stop signs, we, need, run to the pull, stop we sign, need to pull they them. increase their speed after it. It boils down to enforcement a lot of times, doesn't it? Uh, or the lack of enforcement. I wouldn't necessarily go that way. It's always going to be that case. People are going to run stop signs. I have more confidence and faith in our residents that they will obey the stop signs. Well, we did, like I said, we did study at that same location back in 07, and that's what it showed. And same thing on if Country Club. And it's saying, the point that I, the point that I would just try to make clear as far as what the research shows is that it's when the cross street increases, when the traffic on the cross street increases. So in order to ever warrant a stop sign at that location, the traffic coming out of the trailer park would have to increase greatly. Then by, about, it by about five times. Then it would justify a stop sign at that location. Yes. My concern is, if, if you look, I mean, I've got the picture pulled up on, on Google, you, you can't see any traffic coming on 28th Street. So if you're, if you're stopping at the stop sign where you should be leaving the trailer park, mm -hmm. and there's no reason for anybody on 28th Street to stop, if, if I lived in that trailer park, I mean, I would pull out and chances are I'd get hit. You just can't see, you can't see down the street at all. There's that's, trees, Well, actually trailer. it's changed since then, since okay. that picture. We, that street's been lowered about four feet in that direction, west side. So what is, what, about what, the, what is the distance from the stop sign? If you're stopped at the stop sign of the trailer park, about how far down 28th can you see? Uh, in excess of 350 feet. Well, you know, long enough for stopping site distance. And it was we did, lowered. We did check on that. Was it lowered for visibility? Was a part of it? Uh, no, just for the geometric of the road. Yeah, not specifically to that mobile home. No, we, but it improved it at least. It did improve it, yes. That's more for the structure of the road. And that's at the posted limit of 45 miles per hour? No, it's actually posted 35. It's 35 and 35. If they go 45 or 55, to the point of running stop signs, well, it's gonna change. You're always the, gonna get those people that, it doesn't matter what speed limit is. And to be clear as well, the, the chief of police as well as the support of this both are in favor of removing it the speed study we did back in 07 was actually showed that the speed limits uh, the 85th percentile was three miles an hour over uh, 
that'll change. Do a study in the year after you open that and see what <coughs> that speed limit is, because that's going to change. No question about that. Where is that? Well, in Hale, because they're only three miles. And once you take that stop sign out, the speed's going to increase, and, and it'll be 45 miles an hour next time. And then they'll say, well, you should raise the speed limit because everybody's driving 45. Well, the good news is I think that's the one street I definitely wouldn't want to speed on with the number <laughs> of these vehicles that will be going to and from. But maybe that's... We don't... You can't... Well, <laughs> unless they got a radar gun, they, they're not stopping anybody. Oh. They're all mounted. I do think it, at the very least it's something that we should re-examine once the law enforcement center is open uh, because that has the potential to, I mean, quadruple traffic or... And, and it, it's all going to yes. depend on which direction they're coming from. Obviously, uh, and they're coming from Sioux City, and then then it'll go right past us. But it's expected to triple the traffic. But that's with Mid American facility open. With the Mid American. Oh. Once Mid American goes in there, then we're expected to approximately triple the current traffic. Triple current. What was the answer to your question? What triggered this? I, I don't care. No, what? So we we triggered. <laughs> you triggered. No, no, no. Triggered. You, gen you generated it. We no, looked at his it. Question, his question initially that Dan is asking about is why did the stop sign go in initially? No, oh. I, no I was asking what triggered this. I'm this before us now. Oh. That was, That's, it, we saw it as an opportunity to look at this, this stretch of roadway as a whole because the street was shut down for this length of time. So let's check it out and see what we have. Because... When I drive that thing, I don't find it natural at all for that stop sign. And to you, Alex's point, what was the trigger that put it in? Do we know? Originally, they requested it, and council agreed to it. In the trailer. The, trailer? the mobile home park, yes. At the time? Yes. We recommend, engineering recommended against it based on the same Do you know that for a fact? It's in the memo from Act what year? 07. What year? 07. Well, I hope this doesn't trigger looking at all stop signs throughout the community because there are stop signs that are up that the if warrant you, that if don't you have any that you know of that you I'll, we will pull that up and put it in our traffic studies. No, I'm asking. I hope that doesn't happen because it seems like it's oh. serving. Yeah, it's it seems like it's serving a purpose, Gordon. I understand what you're saying about what what you have to do for the standards, whether the standards well, are it, met. And it's and it's not just for the standards either. It's because you, you have a certain feel on the road when you come up to these uh, these signal or these stop signs and intersection, you'll you'll come to some of them. You'll be like, why isn't there a stop sign here, or why is there one? Just in the way it it drives the drivability of the whole street. It does for me. Wherever I go, I've noticed that in several locations here in the city. The stop sign is not correct. We have stop signs along Hamilton Boulevard. On the side streets, we. On the side streets. Yes. What? Why do we have stop signs on those side streets? No, it's not on Hamilton. We have to stop them from driving past into Hamilton. Oh, I see. What, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. <clears throat> Um, it should be known too that there's been no accidents in 10 years either on that stretch. That's good. Now we'll watch that in one year. Tell me how to <coughs> take that out. Yep. Do a traffic study on that in a year. Are you Make a note to do that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a year because I don't think law enforcement center will be up and running by then. That's fine. I'd still like it in a year. In a year? Okay. Yeah. Gordon, are you... Are you totally opposed to waiting? I mean, you, pr you might have a majority vote here with the council, but are you <coughs> totally opposed to waiting until those facilities are opened up just to see what the patterns are like and what the traffic's like? What in, my, in my professional opinion, yes. I think it'd be better to open it up now while it's, the street is closed. As law enforcement center gets opened up in this next couple of years, it would make, to me, more sense. 
Thank you. Passes 3 0, Scott, and more vote no. Citizen concerns. Any citizen want to be heard, please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Hi. How are we doing, guys? Everyone? Guys, gals, everybody. Jeff Carlson, uh, 6701 Prairie View Court, Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, not a big concern here, but just wanted to voice something that I hope would be continued can be an open discussion as I know that you guys have had to make uh, decisions on parking ramps and, and how those are going to play out with regards to pricing and totally understand that obviously we have not elevated pricing in a very long time, so that all makes sense. Just wanted to um, state a concern in regards to there's pretty significant, uh, obviously, development downtown, specifically near the Heritage Ramp, Discovery Ramp, um, and some of those, those locations. There'll be more businesses coming in there. There will be uh, probably more traffic to that area. Uh, also, uh, not only representing the city center that's there, but also the 4th and Jackson uh, condo owners and the businesses that are there as well. And so I just wanted to put it on everyone's just radar or what have you. I'm sure that it is that the allocation of uh, spots there for certain, whether it's certain buildings, certain projects, is a slight concern uh, of uh, you know, some of the business owners that are gonna be there, is there gonna be parking are they going to have too many spots allocated in heritage versus discovery? Is there any way to um, ensure that we can maybe, you know, mix those up if that, if, if that will be? And so I just want to say, you know, again, no, no, not asking for any solution or anything of, the, of that nature, but as we're continuing to try to grow the infrastructure downtown, as we're continuing to try to develop businesses downtown, parking is always a pretty big key. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that up to the attention today. So, Appreciate that. There we go. Yeah. The only other thing that I would just quick mention is one of the things that we did was we actually um, changed the ordinance so that the two different ramps would be that we would try to um, encourage more monthly parkers to utilize Discovery over Heritage just because Heritage is in much more higher demand and more full, so then Discovery is much less. So if people can utilize that, we're trying to incentivize them to be able to use that. Sure, sure. And I would just hope that, uh, obviously, with uh, awesome that we have so many more new units coming downtown, I'm not sure that what the allocation is set for Heritage versus Discovery, but if there was an opportunity to potentially split that or to look at how that what that would look like to ensure that there's more more individuals that have the opportunity to purchase those monthly memberships or have those monthly memberships or, or at the heritage ramp that they could do that um, without them being fully fully allocated to other other spaces so if that makes sense bad mark could we pass these comments on to tiffany yes mm -hmm. consideration I think it may be difficult, though, because if you've been parking there and you're willing to pay the rate, it's going to be difficult to say, well, you have to move now, or unless without doing a lottery or something. I don't know how you could fairly. I mean, I get your concerns, but. I think he's also referring to the agreement with the Badger Roll building. Um, I think they have the opportunity to use. That it. agreement does not allocate any. No. 200 Give, spaces? You know, it gives them the right to 200 spaces, but not in any particular ramp. That's, yeah, the, the, we, we couldn't get many in the other one that's full anyway. Right. Okay. All right. So, so they already so are the, spread out. So it is spread out. There's an allocation. So other folks will have an opportunity. But not designated to, to any one ramp. Gotcha. I think that's what you thought. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. No, thank you guys. And uh, good problem to have. Hopefully they're all full. Yeah. So, no, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, anybody else? Good evening. My name is Aaron Tyler. I'm with Keller Williams, 103 Virginia Street. Uh, some of you may have seen my face on the side of that building across from the warming shelter. It's a 14 unit. Uh, it's currently red tagged and up for demolition. Brick roll house? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So I'm the famous guy there. So what I'm actually, I have a buyer and they're willing to, the current owners are willing to sell it. And 
the buyer just wants some reassurance before he moves forward with some things. I know you guys can't vote on it. Uh, what I'm coming here to do is see if there's any foreseen issues that you may have releasing the demolition order. I've already talked to Daryl Bullock and he said, I've never had them. Uh, I've never had the city council turn any down if I have all the documents I need, uh, the work orders and everything. He's also said he's never had one this far along in the demolition order. And so I'm just coming here doing my due diligence for the client to see if there's anything that I need to bring forward or bring in concern for you guys when that comes hopefully in the next week or two to, uh, I don't know the proper term, but release that demolition order so he can rehab that building finally. I would say that we rely heavily upon Daryl's opinion on that subject. Right. And if you can convince Daryl that you have a legitimate buyer with a legitimate game plan with a very, in that particular case, legitimate time frame, because we've jacked around a long time on that building, that the, I don't know, I mean, I'd be supportive. I'd like to say that we right. need the I unit. I would do. Yeah. yeah, that's a very Just make sure your new owner gets a bigger garbage can than what the one owner mm -hmm. has, because, you know, I drive by every day and Jeff Hansen's getting tired of my text messages. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Mayor, <laughs> so that has been an ongoing issue. Uh, we've doubled the garbage there. Good. Uh, I've also taken invested interest in cleaning that up myself. I I've heard been that. there uh, er, on Mondays and Fridays, making sure it's cleaned up. So there was some management issues and then some obvious garbage stuff. Uh, the last two weeks, I don't know if you've noticed, I do have some pictures that places cleaned up a lot. Yep. Uh, we're also having some tenant issues of, I don't know if they're sending their kids out and their kids can't get it up in the garbage can, but they're setting it next to the garbage can. So we're working on figuring out camera wise who's responsible for that. But like I said, I'm driving by there almost every morning and if I have to put the garbage in there, I am. So uh, that is being addressed. Uh, also have a junk crew coming to clean up a lot of the stuff out of there. Uh, we spent about labor wise about 10 hours cleaning up garbage over the last two weeks because when they leave it on the side, the dogs get in it and then it blows all over. Uh, and as you know, there's a lot of people walking through there that are leaving uh, cans of certain beverages around and things like that. And we've also talked, I've called Watch Command and talked to them about increasing patrols about the homeless and getting them out of there, that it's not a place for them to be. Uh, just trying to stay on top of all those now, things. Are they selling the places to the south as well? Don't they, they own those? Yes. Is it? The whole thing they're selling? Yes. And I have here, I don't know if you guys are interested in taking a look at it, but I have What's the exact address? File together. Uh, that, there's multiple addresses. Right. There's multiple What's buildings. one of them? Uh, 513 59th Street would be the one of the parcel that we're discussing. So the issue when you ask an address is there's multiple properties on one parcel. So that address of the actual brick building is the 900 block of Nebraska, but if you pull that up on Beacon, it won't pull up. I just yeah. looked at that recently on Beacon, by the way. Yeah. I did, because I drive up that street a lot as well. Now, your, your client does have a really solid plan. They've already given that to Daryl. Absolutely. We're working on, he's meeting with Daryl in the property uh, next week, and like I said, if you guys are interested in some of the documents here, I've printed two copies for you if you want. Uh, so we've actually got the plumbing, the electrical, uh, mechanical, and the construction bid all put together. We have that quote all put together. We've been working on this since about the end of May. Um, finding contractors <coughs> is the easiest thing for that property. Uh, so we've been doing our due diligence there. Also have uh, secured financing for the total project. That was uh, going to be my next yeah, question. That's yeah. going to be a... So I appreciate, you know, as far as hanging in there, we've done a lot of things because we knew this was something that the city and Daryl and everybody else, rightfully so in my opinion, is not willing to move forward until somebody has that stuff squared away this time. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's been through a couple owners and uh, those documents weren't followed through as maybe promised. And so I, you know, talked to the buyer and said, listen, these documents and everything has to be squared away. They have to know you're serious. So if you're serious, these are the things we're going to need. And that's what we've been doing for months on end. Very good. Yeah. Perfect. Is the number Is there... of units and that kind of thing going to stay the same? Yeah, we would Pretty like much. to keep it 14 units. Absolutely. So that's the goal. Anything that may be a red flag or any concern for not having the demolition, if we come with all those documents Daryl requires. 
don't think so. But I would think of not if Daryl recommends it. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much thanks. for your time. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to be heard? Andrew Velasic, 723 Jones, UC Iowa. A couple concerns here. I restrain myself from talking about stop signs for the immediate. Um, I was just wondering what was going on with the Yamanashi Sister City Council, uh, and I wanted to express some concerns with that. I didn't really want to bring it up, kind of wanted to dance around it, but I was really frustrated immediately from starting it. After a first meeting, it was um, by the community inclusion liaison stated that Japanese and Chinese are the same, which uh, I don't know if that's, you're not going to feel very included if you're compared to somebody so distinct as yourself. Um, so that was disappointing, and I just felt, I don't feel much of a direction or passion there, and I'm still happy to be part of it, and just as I stated, and becoming part of it, uh, Yamanashi is amazing, and I love the culture, and still want to push, and that's all on that. Um, and also, I'm going through the same concerns with housing matter. I have court again, and I'm a productive member of the society, Sioux City Society, um, and I deserve better than a runaround. It's been suggested by myself and by others that I sue these individuals, and this and the last council meeting it was that I was here addressing this issue, it was stated that this was not um, an employee of the mayor's when um, he, the, the employee of the mayor is the one collecting money for his father and the one who has been the most, um, <laughs> to say it lightly, irritating. I have um, no idea who you're talking about. Yeah, that was um, when I, I brought the court papers that, and they got thrown out that uh, well, are you denying that Matt Toff is a worker of yours? That's what I'm talking about. I have no idea who you're talking about. Matt, I'm talking about um, where I'm renting an apartment, 723 Jones, um, the who's, Toff family. Who's uh, the guy you're talking about? Matt Toff. No, Matt Toff is an employee of mine, but yeah, he doesn't own the property. His father probably does. He's the one that collects money on it, and he works okay, directly well, for his, his father. father and his, and Why his, am I supposed to control an employee that has nothing well, to do with Well, if I hired somebody, I would not hire somebody that had poor ethics. Okay. Go ahead, because your time's running. Um, I believe I'm done. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's all. Anyone else to be heard? Matthew. I um, just want to point out that piecing out the bid on 8B through C saved us almost $2,500. So I don't know if anybody else is running the numbers. I know Julie likes to run the numbers. But I noticed that, and, uh, and I, was, I was pretty happy about that. That saved us quite a bit of money for uh, the, the um, I guess, I noticed banning. on the pump it was actually a low bid. It wasn't a low bid because they did the memo wrong. Did, that, did I get any <laughs> I credit for that? I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't add up um, and then there, there's two events so tomorrow at Briarcliff um, in the Claire room starting at 530 uh, put on by the Sierra Club Great Plains Action Society and others is the Prairie Knot pipelines so they're talking about community engagement uh, with the proposed co2 pipelines um, and all are welcome to that <coughs> there's also let's see Friday at 11 a.m. the bigger together at yummy blocks so there's, there's what the bigger together, it's the big brother, big sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's that at? at 11. That's at Yummy Blocks on West Seventh. Peggy. It's Law. Peggy Laws. Yep. Okay. Yep. Kind of down from the hall. Where's that? At what time? That starts at eleven. Okay. I have that on my calendar. I don't. Don't we have a meeting tomorrow too? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Arcs. Wednesday. Isn't there an inclusive? No, there's a. Differences dialogue. <coughs> Is that it? Well, what about the letter? I mean, have you polled the council about writing a letter in support? I wanted to get some clarification. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Julie? 
Um, I don't have anything today. I know there's a differences in dialogue coming up on Thursday at 6 p.m. third floor of the Art Center. So you can get more information that on our Sioux City Inclusive page. Surprisingly, I have nothing there. Really? I tell you what. You had a big trip and everything. Talked it all out. Yeah. Mr. Moore, um, this Friday we have the Fallen Firefighters Ceremony here in the Council Chambers from oh. 3 till 4 on Friday, October 7th. I have nothing further. Would you have Gabby put that on my schedule? Because I thought I was going to be gone, but I am not going to be gone. Friday? Okay. Yep. Mr. Uh, Padmore, you can cancel my order. <laughs> Jessica sent us a deal about butterflies out by... Mm -hmm. I w what do we have to do to say we want that, Bob? I it wasn't included in that email. I was going to say I didn't get I think there that. Were, I didn't read there it. three locations? They found a couple of city-owned properties that would work really well to, for bird habitat, uh, butterflies, just kind of little miniature, almost nature preserve type right. things that have the already like the start of the correct grass there, then they would incorporate some more milkweeds and things like that. I think one of them is at the uh, the water retention on Floyd. Right, that they just the built. New, yep, for the new uh, northern crossing development. And another one out on Outer Drive somewhere? Yeah, I did. I saw the map, but I don't remember. Right. Anyway. Yeah, they, you'll get, you got the map. Parks and Rec will take it over yeah. and mow it, and they'll put some signage up, and so it's going to look pretty natural. Yeah. Well, and I know they did that at Prairie Park, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Planted butterfly. Yeah. Habitat. Anyway, I think that's that would be. I'll, just, I'll follow up. Pretty, I'll follow pretty up. important to do that. Mm -hmm. I move we adjourn. Second. O'Kane. Okay. Aye. Janer. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye.